You know the amazing part about uh, those muscle relaxers I do have is holy smokes do you sleep like a baby. My plan was to take a nice little nap and well it's been about 10 hours later and we are now awake and moving. We're in Fairview, Kansas. Oof, almost said Nebraska. I rehearsed it many many times and I said make sure you say Fairview, Kansas not Fairview, Nebraska. And then I turned around and almost said Fairview, Nebraska. We are on a return trip from Topeka, Kansas. Topeka, Kansas is only 265 miles from Sioux City, Iowa. That is an easy down and back in one shift. Um, I didn't make it in one shift. I haven't made it in one shift all week, actually. Uh, before, you know, the, earlier in the week or earlier in the videos, we went down there and there wasn't a uh, an empty trailer. And plus, we get down there probably usually around, eh, it's anywhere between 3 and 6 a.m. So when we get down there, it, it's basically bedtime. Now, if I can get down there at a normal time, then maybe we could just uh, do a turn and burn. But I can't watch that sun come up. And that's just the way it's been for years and it's the way it'll always be. I've always wanted to get my dad something like that. Um, the pickup, not so much. I'd like to keep him in a crew cab for his old farm pickup. We always call it that, that F-250, that Super Duty you guys always see. The one that's all beat up. He uses that out at the farm. Um, no, we don't have a farm, but he uses it for when he's uh, uh, planting food plots or building hunting blinds and stuff like that. Well, that service box would work a heck of a lot easier for him than a normal standard box. He wouldn't have to crawl up in there or do anything. Unfortunately, I cannot find a box like that for his truck. He's got a 19, no, he's got a 2000 Ford F-250 Super Duty. It's got, I think the box on it is six foot or maybe six and a half foot. I don't know if a normal eight foot utility bed would work. That's all I can find, I can't find any built for a six foot bed because I'd be fine just replacing his bed on there with that utility box it'd work out a lot nicer all right well we have a few miles to go till we get back up to Sioux City the wagon we have behind us is empty and we are going to take it up to the city and drop it off By a few miles till we get back up to Sioux City, Iowa is 200 miles, 203 miles by GPS, but right at 200 miles from here. Now, as you can tell by that lake setting underneath the truck, you can tell that it's very humid out. That is the uh, air conditioning condensation dripping down onto the pavement, and it has formed a nice little lake. A lot of people, and not a lot of people, I ran into a person while we were on our Sturgis vacation that uh, told me they need to take their van to the shop. It needs to go get worked on. It's got a real bad leak. And I was standing outside the hotel talking to them. They go, see, it's running down the pavement because their van was sitting there running. I reached down and I touched it. And I knelt down because the back wasn't hurting that bad at the time. And I could still kneel like a normal person. I looked and I go, no, sir, that's not a leak. That's your air conditioner, man. It's extremely humid out here. And, uh, well, that's what's leaking. He goes, really? So I don't have to take it to a shop? I go, nope, you're good to go. He goes, man, I had a, an appointment all scheduled with them tomorrow morning. That's why I'm at this hotel here. And you're telling me that's just my air conditioner. I go, yes, sir. That is your air conditioner.
Now, before you go and judge that fine gentleman with that leak, you need to know, he's from the West Coast, born and raised, never went anywhere else in America, and this was his first trip. He actually rented the camper van that he was in. Where he was from, his average high humidity was eight, maybe nine percent humidity. So his air conditioner system is not gonna do that little drippy drop and have to pull all that moisture out of the cab of the truck or cab of the vehicle. So you can't give him too much stress. He's just not used to seeing that because he wasn't used to the middle of South Dakota humidity. Right now we're pulling into Onawa, Iowa. This is the good part about running these Topeka loads back and forth is I go right past the home base. Onawa is only about 30 miles from where I live, 25 miles actually. I'm going to meet up with the family here and we're going to have ourselves a little Mexican. And then we'll get back on the road and keep on doing some trucking. First we got to make it through this landmine here. Not too sure how deep these holes are. This truck stop used to actually be privately owned. And no, the holes weren't much better, but they were better than what they were when Petromark took it over. They actually gave everybody some false sense of uh, security type saying when uh, Petromark took it over because we were just kind of thinking, oh man, they're going to make it look nice. They're going to keep things uh, graded up pretty good. They regraded everything, remodeled the truck stop, the whole works. And as you can see, it uh, it didn't last long. Well, I guess it's just the women I'm meeting up with. And now my daughter's going to laugh at me because I'm limping like an old person. No, no, your no. Dude, you're both broken. I swear, no. I got a broken family. No, we're good. Why are we both broken? Because the whole ride over, Mom's like, oh, my shoulder. Oh, my shoulder. And now she's like, now my eye, my eye. My we're kind of, we're kind of used to mom being broken. Oh, shut up. I'm not shut broken up. on a normal basis, I would like to say. You've been broken for a long time, though, so. How'd your Explorer end up at the shop today? What? Did they fix your Explorer while it was at the shop today? It didn't go to the shop. Why didn't it go to the shop? Because you forgot, and then I forgot, and nobody remembers. You chew very loudly. Like, please stop eating chips as in that loud. This this is insanity. Yeah, you're eating quietly now. But uh, no, I'll, I'll eat right in your ear. No more chips for you. I, I can't take any more. Well, now we get the fun of trying to weasel out of this parking lot. I can't be the only one that can't do crunching the chips. I inherited that from my dad. You were never allowed to eat an apple or anything that crunches anywhere near dad when I was a kid. He lets my kids, his grandkids, eat whatever they want to around him with no fear at all. Me? No, I didn't get to grow up that way. But yet then there's my lovely wife, Gordon. She can seriously make a banana crunchy somehow. I don't know how she does it, but that woman crunches a lot and it will drive a man completely insane. That's all I gotta say about that. <clears throat> now that we have our food in us, we're gonna continue our trip up to Sioux City, get this trailer dropped off, and prepare ourselves for yet another trucking adventure gonna be weird when my little girl moves away to college it's gonna be darn weird it's just gonna be me and warden 
my son is in that stage where I just don't think he likes us much, which is understandable. He's a teenage boy. So we're almost going to be like empty nesters, really, if you think about it. out for you guys today i'll catch you on the next one you guys stay safe and as always i'll see you next time